Joining us now, Hooray is host of the To Die For Daily podcast. Our uh, favourite. favourite American, our favourite person, in fact, uh, Kinsey Schofield. Hey. Welcome, Kins. Hi, Kins. Uh, now, uh, we, we had a Michael Cole on earlier. Uh, the question is obvious, isn't it? It's this, you know, the, 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 the two brothers, William and Harry, never more was their bitter feud laid bare than last night when William was at the event here in London, the Diana Legacy Awards, making a, a very nice speech. Uh, and later on, Harry was beamed in from Mon Montecito, uh, proving that these brothers can't even stand to be in the same room, even if one of them is in Zoom, so is on Zoom. So that feud continues apace. Uh, but the timing of the launch of, wait a minute, drum roll, American Riviera Orchard. What does that mean? Uh, the, her new brand lifestyle, TIG2, or whatever you call it. I mean, I just thought that it was pretty tacky. In fact, I thought disgusting. She knew what she was doing, overshadowing the one area where those two brothers are still connected. They hate each other, but they are still joined in their devotion to their beloved mother's memory, and she trampled all over that. Come on. Um, first of all, I just want to say that name. It's pretty prestigious and pretentious for a girl that wrote the United States government claiming to eat at the 499 salad bar at Sizzler. I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> you, I, I, can't, I couldn't believe it when I read it, because I was like, aren't you the Sizzler salad bar girl? This is, you know, such a pretentious name. Uh, but I agree with you. And yeah, I remember talking to Alex about this forever ago, about how we expected her to launch this brand. Uh, and everything she does is so calculated. If it's not just hijacking Diana's legacy in the Diana Awards, which is also what I accused her of a few weeks ago when she stopped at, at someone's house at in Uvalde, Texas, uh, which was I felt like just ripping a, a page out of the Diana playbook. Um, but I, I think that she also was trying to acknowledge this has become her date. This has become her and Harry's date because this is also the anniversary of Prince Harry's quote unquote freedom flight when they left Canada for the United States to start their life in America. That was documented in the Netflix series. The rules don't apply to Megan. She's making up her own rules. And that's why she wasn't a good senior working member of the royal family because she d just doesn't respect other people's structure. I think this is a real sort of window into the levels of that woman's jaw-dropping narcissism because it seems to me in Meghan's mind that everyone needs to live like her and be like her and emulate her because she's so perfect in her <laughs> beige world of, you know, fancy throws and jams. Um, but do you think it's actually going to be a success? Because I think when it comes to cooking programmes, it's a pretty crowded marketplace and people tune into cooking programmes either to learn how to do something really interesting, you know, on a Saturday morning or to watch, you know, people set themselves on fire and have Gordon Ramsay yell expletives at you, where she's just so tedious. She is, but did you know that right before she married Prince, or right before she met Prince Harry, she was in the UK pitching a cooking travel show, and she had secured an agency that was interested in helping her to accomplish this goal. So I feel like she's just resorted back to life before Harry. I felt that way, um, you know, when we were looking at her at South by Southwest on that panel. It just feels like she's going back to her comfort zone. But you're right, you know, she's very limited in the talent department and might lack even more when it comes to work ethic. I don't, you know, she doesn't have the type of personality that's going to reel you in uh, kitchen wise. Was she silly or funny or um, over the top? But maybe she pulls in celebrity guests and she hopes that, that they draw that sort of attention, you know, you utilize those people to elevate herself the way she tried to do with archetypes. Yeah, I, I don't know what she's like uh, in private, uh, what kind of a person she is. Uh, maybe she is funny, but uh, as soon as she gets on screen, as soon as she starts talking, I mean, she's the opposite of funny. She's very, very worthy and <laughs> dull. Uh, so uh, 200,000 people immediately started following Wait a minute, American Riviera Orchard. They immediately started following it. But I'm doubtful that that will be followed by investment on, part, on the part of the public. I'm doubtful about how many people will buy Megan uh, carving knives and cutlery and Megan jam. Uh, I'm not sure she's such a big character, as such a big personality and star that people actually well, want like, to give her money. 
I think we need to be realistic. Um, there is a lot of morbid curiosity happening right now surrounding the British royal family because of the, the Princess of Wales. So did Meghan you know, want to jump on that train as well? I, sir, I believe so. I, there's so every, <clears throat> every day I'm talking about the Princess of Wales. So why not? Why wouldn't Meghan launch her big Instagram right now when, there's, when the royal family are continuously trending yeah. every day? A lot of people that are watching, it's just pure morbid curiosity. How is Meghan behaving during the Kate ca chaos? And, and that's what people want to know. They don't want to buy her jam. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, but they're, you're right. They're very curious uh, at this time. And she is cashed oh, in, I would suggest, on if was, uh, Kate's problems. Yeah. Yeah, if there's one thing we know Meghan's good at, it's stirring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, Kate, you, you, you know, bringing up Kate there. In the UK here, you know, we're, we're all sort of talking about it. People are going down the world wormholes online but there's a, some, a level of discipline I think when it comes to the media speculating about what's going on but it seems to me in America everyone's gone absolutely tonto for Kate Spiracy. Oh my goodness I have I, I've got to be better about just saying I'm not going to talk about that because I have been so caught off guard by some of the questions over the last week that I just say well that's a horrible conspiracy that's my least favorite one <laughs> um, but I just need to be like I don't want that that's crazy I'm not even going to go I'm not going to give it life but yes you're absolutely right they are willing to talk about anything and everything on the dark web um, and you know it reminds me of Princess Diana how we felt like we lost Princess Diana. She was taken from us because of the big bad media. It feels like people are pulling and yanking and tearing at the Princess of Wales, Catherine, on social media. It, I just feel like I'm seeing the same thing play out, except this time, instead of photographers, it's keyboards. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, or, or cameras. the thing is, Kinsey, that you're, you're over in America, I mean, here in Britain, there's a lot of speculation, fairly frenzied, uh, but, you know, we're a little bit more respectful to the royal family than, say, some other countries. Uh, in America, it's not just America, Australia, Europe, the feeding frenzy on uh, Photogate is just off the scale, and it's leading, as you quite rightly say, to some really horrible, hurtful theories. Now... That's vile. Uh, there's a way to stop this. And in the Daily Mail today, Jan Muir, their columnist, says, I'm afraid we're going to have to ask for more transparency from the mm. royal family. We need her to say something. We need her to say, there's nothing wrong with me. I didn't yeah, die... do a little I, Zoom call I didn't to the die, nation. I didn't die 18 months ago. So, you know, it's not fair that they should have to do this, but under the circumstances, the Kensington Palace need to put their head above the parapet and do something and say something to kill off all this vile speculation about what's going on with Kate. I agree. I value the Princess of Wales's privacy, but at the same time, I feel like the secrecy is jeopardizing her safety or the safety of her children because there's going to be a weirdo that wants to, a TikTok weirdo that wants to get the scoop or that wants to get to the bottom of whatever they think that this is. And, and, you know, I do agree with with you and, and that columnist that I'd like just anything. I mean, I'll take a flip phone fuzzy video of the Princess of Wales buying bananas at a Tesco at this point. Now, that'll, that'll give me some confidence. I'll take but that I, one. I that, I, I, well, I've watched that. But ser seriously, you know, she's well enough... Uh, apparently to take this picture. Mm. She's well enough, or rather they say William took this picture, but she's well enough to edit the picture, the Mother's Day picture. She's well enough to be seen in the back of the car with William. She's clearly up and about. So is it beyond her to just maybe do a piece to camera to say, listen, you know, I'm recovering, uh, I'm recovering well, please, no more of this nonsense, I'll be back in action later in the summer. It would kill the whole thing off. Uh, so the question is, is why won't the palace do this? Or at least maybe get William to say something. I think that William and, and Catherine are in this uh, really unique position for the first time in their lives. They are such a valuable asset to the British royal family that they have more control than they've ever imagined. And I think Prince William is trying to protect his wife against something that's very unfair and against something that he witnessed his mother 
you know, go through. Uh, unfortunately, it's been handled so poorly that, uh, you know, it's just out of control. And there's got, they, instead of them saying, we don't want to do this, we're going to do it our way, they've got to look at what's happened, what's occurred online. And I mean, the worst part is that it's not British taxpayers that are the craziest and that are stirring up the, the most trouble online. It's weirdo Americans. You know, it's, it's people <laughs> all over the world. It would be one thing if it felt like that it was really, um, you know, your side of the pond that was instigating this and they needed to see her. But it's it's worldwide and it's out of control and, and they've got to, you know, I don't know how you put the cat back in the bag, um, but it, it's just it's too chaotic at this point. Mm. I, I, ju I just think, you know, it's, it's horrible that that that. that Kate, in her circumstance, should be forced to do this. But I think circumstances are really yeah. spinning out of control. So something, Kensington Palace have to do something to stop this wild, hurtful speculation, not only in your country, Kinsey, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that they can do something yeah. fairly, fairly Let's soon. Let's not forget, though, that the real victim in all of this, the person who is the living embodiment of Princess Diana and everything she went through, is Meghan Markle. Of course.